Well, good morning. I'm glad you could join us on this beautiful kickoff to the Memorial Day weekend. I'm Matt Allen, and you are on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Dave Riccio has decided to take the weekend off, and I guess he deserves it since I think I've been gone about five out of the last uh, six weeks, and he is out celebrating his wedding anniversary with his lovely wife. So, again, we're here on Bumper to Bumper Radio every Saturday from 11 to noon right here on KTAR. And we're here to help you with your car. You, the motoring public, so that you can have a better overall car ownership experience, repair experience, whatever it may be related to your car, we're here to help you. Maybe it's a repair question. Should you sell your car? Is it time to get a new one? What new car do I want to get? We can help you. And I've brought two guys in to help me. But first, you need to know if you want to get involved with the show, you have a question that we can help you with, don't be shy. It's 602 277 5827. 602 277 KTAR. And on the bumper to bumper roadmap today, we have racing technology. Does it make it to your streetcar? This is a big motorsports weekend in the gearhead and uh, race head in me enjoys that. Proper maintenance of your belts and hoses. And two guys, like I said, here to help from the Bumper to Bumper Network. We've got Dave Denman, owner of Dave's Car Care, 51st Avenue in Peoria. That is a landmark there, 35 years, I think, on the corner Dave has been there. And Tim Nelson, manager of Virginia Auto Service in Central Phoenix. Great great to have you guys here. Welcome. Dave, you have been going through a tremendous amount of remodeling over there at your shop. Uh, the place is, well... By any standard, before you even started, <laughs> the place was uh, probably uh, immaculate by anybody's standard, but you have taken it over the top. You want to tell me a little bit about that? Well, we looked at the current technology, the automobile today, and we felt like that we needed to take our facility to that level. So, uh, you know, Matt, one of our heroes is Penske, the guy <laughs> that knows how to do it right. He's a winner. So we went out and uh, looked at his Lamborghini, Ferrari, Bentley shop, and uh, we use that as a model. So what we've done is we've customized the facility with all matching cabinetry and toolboxes. We added a uh, self-storage working area to get all the clutter out. And uh, I love the end result was my 82-year-old father that's been 29 years in the aviation business statement was, it's just too clean to be a garage. <laughs> well, you know, it's nice, and you reference Roger Penske. And, and uh, I'm an IndyCar fan, and Dave's a race fan, and, and Penske sets the standard in that arena. And, and what Dave's talking about, you go out to, to some of the Penske dealerships, and every thing is perfect the guys don't have their own toolboxes they're built-in toolboxes they all have their own computer workstations and that's the model that you've adopted it's everything it's all branded about dave's car care and truly and it's just like all the other bumper to bumper shops you're not doing business with oh i don't know you're not just doing business with uh with brand x box store or by 25 um 25 chain, not not franchise, but you know a, a company that has 22 shops. You're not doing business with a family business. That's what you're doing. Virginia Auto Service, Dave's Car Care, uh, you know all the bumper to bumper shop. Larry Harker's, Combs Auto, Shadow Mountain Auto Carry. Those are family businesses, and you get personal service. You get the attention, and God forbid there is a problem. It's one step up the ladder. It's one phone call to get to the decision maker. Well, that's and, absolutely and that's true, like. Matt, because, you know, the thing about the Bumper to Bumper Network is is you really have an opportunity to build a relationship with your service provider, which is unique in anything today, whether it be air conditioning, plumbing, electrical. That's one of the most frustrating experiences people have. Your doctor. When they go to spend that money, you know. Yeah. So, but uh, so we've enjoyed enjoyed the process and invite everybody to come by, take a look. I'd be happy to give you a personal tour. It's great. And Tim, you're my right hand man at at the shop. Eighteen years, and I think it's eighteen years, right? Yeah, Sixteen years 16, this October. I've been there eighteen years. Yeah. So again, and that's part of it. You see familiar faces at these shops, and uh, and so if you're looking for a, a technician or looking for a shop, definitely bumper to bumper radio dot com. So, and if you have questions about your car today, anything you want to talk about, don't be shy. Call in 
5827. And one of the things that uh, is on my, my list today is belts and hoses. Technology is changing. And uh, it used to be that you could go down and take a look at the belt and, and see all kinds of cracks in it, and, and you knew it was, it, was, it was due for replacement. And this is an email that we get and a common question, or we get the phone call back at the shop that my neighbor looked at the car and, and, and they said that that shop, I don't need, I don't need a belts. There's nothing wrong with them. Well, the technology is changing in these belts. The hoses rot from the inside out, and, and so it, it's not the serpentine belt where you can look and see all these cracks in it. They've changed the compound of the belt and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce what they're making the belts out of these days, but they wear like a tire. You're not going to look down and see cracks in them. And, and if you take, for example, a serpentine belt that, you know, end to end, if you were to cut that loop and just clip it and roll it out, that belt might be eight feet long. Well, if you remove a millimeter of wear from that entire surface, the inner will become the inner diameter, that belt may stretch out and, and be three-quarters of a of a or three centimeters larger diameter so you start to lose tension i mean there, there's all kinds of different things there's some tools right tim that, that yeah. the technicians can use yeah the, the, you know the belts today are they're made they're made differently where you may have a belt on a car that's fifty thousand, sixty thousand miles old and it has no cracks in it at all but the technology now with the with the belt gauges that we have it'll show that it's worn and there's even a new app out now that gates has come up with that we can take a picture of the belt and within 10 seconds, it can tell us if that belt is good or bad. Yeah, it measures it. It measures it, yes. And we have the tool. You, you slide it down into the groove of the, of the belt. And if it sticks up, you know that the, the V has not been worn out, so the belt is good. Or if it, if it falls down in that valley, it's worn out. So it's more than just a visual inspection. There, there's actually some testing there. And then the other big thing is hoses. When do you replace the hoses? Uh, yeah, we've always thought, you know, you know, eight years, 80,000 miles, that's one of the manufacturer gates says to replace the belt and hoses. Uh, but, you know, in the in the days of when there was two radiator hoses and two heater hoses, that was pretty simple to look at and say, OK. But now some of these cars, like Dave and I were talking, that they have 12, 10 heater hoses on the car. And if one of those heater hoses may have went bad, what do we do? Do we replace all 12 of them at the same time? Or do we replace just that one? Well, and that's why it is so important to build the relationship with your repair facility because you can have the conversation, is this car, does it travel extended periods of times on the highway? And Matt used an example of the daughter at the U of A. It's got to transport herself back and forth at a 200-mile round trip. Are we going to risk, when we've already had a hose rupture, of leaving somebody stranded on the side of the road? But it is a significant investment today if you're going to change all of the belts and hoses on a car. And you've got to look at the value of what the automobile is giving you, your ROI, return on investment. We're like, we've got cars on the road longer today than we've ever had in our nation's history, and it's going to continue to grow. And so these are important questions that you need to ask yourself and your service provider. Well, and it's the, that's what you said, David. I always preach the relationship so we can have that conversation. And that's where you as the consumer need to be comfortable to ask questions. Why? Maybe the question is, why are you only replacing one and not two or three or four or seven hoses? Or the opposite is, why do you want to replace all eight? And so a lot goes into that. Like Dave was saying, is this car, you know, Grandma running around town, she goes to church in the grocery store twice a week. She's aware of her car, and, and she's pretty astute to leaks and, and is conscious of those things. Well, maybe we're not just going to go be ultra proactive. But if that car, you're a salesman, for example, you're a realtor, <laughs> you know, you're going out and showing a $200,000 house or a million-dollar house, whatever it may be, and you get stuck on the side of the road with a client, I look at some of these some of these investments. It's truly an investment. It's like insurance. Um, that plays a role into that decision making. That's something that you can vet out with your shop. The other thing is that, and here's a, the other term. And here we go. I'll read it. It's uh, if I can even find it here now. Electrochemical degradation or ECD. And I was talking about these hoses rot from the inside. There's a couple ways to uh, to you can squeeze the hose and feel for soft spots, and sometimes they crunch. But truly, the, the cooling system is creating electricity, and, and it's just rotting and deteriorating the hoses. 
So if you haven't taken care of your cooling system, maybe a car with 90,000 miles on it but it's had two cooling system flushes probably doesn't need hoses. Maybe the car that's got 90,000 but the coolant's never been changed, it might. So and That's if, a recipe for disaster there. If you have questions about your belts and hoses, anything to do with your car, we invite you to give us a call and don't be shy, 602-277-5827, 602 602- 277 KTAR. My pappy said, son, you're going to drive me to drinking if you don't stop driving that hot rod Lincoln. Bumper to Bumper on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio on a beautiful Memorial Day weekend. Uh, good way to kick off the weekend. And I know uh, a lot of us, it's been a tough week in Phoenix this week. We, we lost, uh, lost a firefighter and a police officer last week. And... Uh, so it's it's uh, you know we just our hearts go out to the officer Daryl Rates uh, his family saw some of those pictures you know I've got young daughters and and I thought that was really cool how all two hundred of those cops went to her graduation from kindergarten it w- it was neat and and he's being honored today I think it's happening right now and uh, you know a lot of people are out lining the roads it's really really nice to see so that just brings up another point you know Memorial Day weekend it's about the soldiers who lost their life and and this officer was a uh, was a soldier served in Iraq uh, a couple times. He was a uh, an airman or a uh, a medic, and uh, this is a DUI that caused this. And everybody's out partying this weekend and having a good time, and we need to be careful and not uh, not be out drinking and driving. I think there was a DUI involved with the person that was getting pulled over, investigated, and and nobody knows, but. Uh, speculation from my point anyway it's probably dui the person that hit him so that's two duis that cost his life so please be careful out there don't drink and drive that's the worst thing could happen the best thing is you get a get a ticket or or uh you know don't hurt yourself and you get away with it but get a cab and be careful yeah matt it also reminds us that uh how sometimes the community just takes these folks for granted i think that we need to uh just let them know if you see a fireman or policeman, thank them for their service to our community because that's why we're uh, allowed the privilege to be safe in this uh, state and in this in our nation. Yeah, you know, it's the last guy you want to see the red and blues when you uh, were speeding a little bit. But I'll tell you what, that's the first guy you want to see when you've got a problem. So, so anyway, six zero two two seven seven five eight two seven. If we can help you with your car, and. Uh, Wow, you need to pick it back up a notch after that. Sorry about that. But uh, racing, everybody knows, or at least a lot of people that listen and my friends know, I'm a, I'm a, a motorhead. Love racing. My last job, if you can call it that, before I opened Virginia Auto Service, I was a, a, a crew mechanic for Porsche Motorsport, uh, racing around the country. And, and I love road racing. And uh, it's got a lot of races this weekend. We've got, uh, if you're a motorcycle man, you've got the... Oh, man, TT of uh, oh gosh, I forget it. My buddy Peter's gonna gonna beat me up now. But uh, Isle of Man, that is an amazing motorcycle race. We've got the Monaco GP, one of my favorites, the Indy 500. Uh, local winner here. Previously, he's not in the race this year, but Buddy Rice, local guy. And uh, then we've got the Coke 600, uh, and this is all Sunday. So if you want to talk racing, and what we're here for that. But one of the things in in uh, the technologies from the race cars make their way into your road car. So whether it's steering and suspension, transmissions, now you see the, the Tiptronic or the Sport Shift transmissions and double dual shift gearboxes where there's no clutch in this automatic transmission. Uh, definitely the tire technology. Dave, what else? I mean, I know you're a, you're a race fan. You're a NASCAR guy. Well, steering and suspension, shock absorbers. You know, and uh, NASCAR is just, I believe this year, they moved from carburation to fuel injected. So we're probably going to see much more technology come out of that events like that. Uh, you know, and these guys got backup systems for everything. So, I, you know, I'm sure manufacturers are paying attention to that. You know, the one thing in racing, not the one thing, but one one of the many things that I would like to see in a street car now that they have in racing is a cooling system pressure warning light. Why? Well, if... It's not that you the cooling pr- pressure gets too high. We're going to have a relief cap for that. But it gets too low, now you know you've got a leak. Imagine what we could save on breakdowns and unneeded repairs if you, if we had something like that. So. Well, just uh, both of you gentlemen, uh, I know you have the memory and the recall of going to someone and saying, your car came in, it overheated, you've got no coolant, how far did you drive it? 
I drove it till it quit. What's the end result? An engine. Well, and, and I've had a lot of a lot of guys or whatever they want to want to you know beat up not physically beat up on their son or their daughter or their wife or whatever and say gosh didn't you see that light the, the warning light was on I said no it wasn't because the problem is the coolant has leaked out and there's nothing to make that heat transfer to the sensor so it's not turning on the light so yeah that light can't read air <laughs> yeah it yeah. doesn't it might go up a little bit so we've got some open lines if you've got questions 602-277-5827 602 602- 277 KTAR and we've got Lee in Scottsdale calling on his 2004 Chevy Silverado. Lee, what can we help you with today? Yeah, uh, I've got a problem with the uh, air conditioner. It uh, it happens uh, just very rarely, but I'm driving along actually just a slow pit, uh, uh, at a slow pace in the in a parking lot and the air conditioner just cuts off. It's just, uh, it starts blowing uh, warm air. Uh, I turned it off and let it set for about a so half an hour, turn it back on, and it's back on again. Now this has happened several times in the past, and I uh, just let turn it off and, and uh, uh, let it set for a while, and the, if I turn the air conditioner back on, and I get uh, cold air. Lee, will that ever quit working when you're just driving down the highway, running your errands, or, or you're going around, or does it just fail? And, and, and when it's when you're doing that, is it always blowing cold air? And then when you when it does stop working again, is does it actually blow hot air like heated air, or is it just blowing amb- ambient temperature air? No, it, it's blowing hot air, and it doesn't. Ha- it hasn't happened while I've been going quite quickly on the on the uh, uh, road. It, it usually happens most of the time when when I'm just going small uh, at a, uh, a, a slow pace. Dave, where would you, if you were at the counter and, and Lee came in, what would be your suggestion to start? What, where do you think your technicians would start looking at? Well, I think the basic thing you've got to look is you've got to give information from Lee about history of service of the air conditioning system. And obviously you're going to look for, uh, you know, electrical or some sort of thing. But, Lee, let me, let me tell you one thing that I would do. I would choose me a service provider that I trust. And I would have in mind where that facility is. And when that system fails you, I would drive straight to that facility, not shut the vehicle off, and go get that technician to come look. Your chances of finding an accurate repair at that point are excellent. Yeah, and that's, you know, again, in Scottsdale, great bumper-to-bumper shops. We've got you covered from north to south with Combs Auto Repair, uh, Air Park Auto Service in the Air Park, uh, Whitey's in South Scottsdale, Joel in North Tempe at Arizona Imports. But, Dave, you're right. One of the things we would – it doesn't sound to me like a charge issue. It sounds to me like it's a, a control issue. And these, these – even the pickup trucks, they're sophisticated. These are, these are Cadillacs, so to speak. And there's electronic controls in the dash, and they're going to – they have heat – the blend doors and mode doors. Mode doors are going to tell it to come out of the dash, come out of the vents for the floorboard or the defrost. The mode door – are the, the – the, the temp- temp- temperature door. Temperature door is going to make it go hot or cold, and they can lose their home. And there's a controller that controls those, and, it, and so it's going to maybe be blending cold air and hot air to get the temperature that you want. Well, if you're getting superheated air, that sensor is probably losing its home, and uh, and we need to find out what's happening. There's, there it might set a code in the computer. Uh, several different things that happen. We've got some open lines, 602-277-KTAR, and we'll be right back on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Matt Allen, your KTAR car guy, and I've brought some help with me today. Dave Denman from Dave's Car Care, a fixture for 30-plus years at 51st Avenue in Peoria, and Tim Nelson, the manager at Virginia Auto Service, have Come in to help me answer your questions, and you know I was a little rusty. I've uh, Dave's been running the program. I've I've been out for several weeks, had a vacation, was sick. Uh, you know, if, uh, I was back in Washington D.C. and and uh, with Memorial Day upon us, it, it uh, timely that uh, I was out and went to the Vietnam War Memorial, the War World War II, World War II Memorial that I think recently opened. 
uh, Arlington Cemetery. We watched the, the changing of the guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and saw Kennedy's grave site. And I've put some of those pictures up on our Facebook page. And you can find our Facebook page by searching on Facebook at Bumper to Bumper Radio. Or you can go to Bumper to Bumper Radio dot com where you can do several things. You can find our Facebook link there. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can ask us a question by going to the contact page. If you need a personal referral, you can send Dave and I an email there. Now, I'm not saying we answer you 24 hours a day. We get to those on Monday or Tuesday, usually. This week, maybe it would be Tuesday or Wednesday. So there's some resources at BumperToBumperRadio.com, including all the shops that are, that are part of this great network and program to, to help you with your car value-wide. So um, we have got some calls and some very anxious people. So we're going to first go with Stu in Phoenix on a 2004 Nissan Murano. Stu, what can we help you with today? Yeah, I got a 2004 Nissan Murano, and the uh, it's got a clicking noise coming from the transmission area that follows the RPMs up and down. Um, it's really prevalent when it's cold, but when it's when it warms up, it seems to only do it. Uh, like if, you, if you're traveling on the freeway, if the, uh, the RPMs are keeping up with the speed, you know, it, it, but if you accelerate or decelerate, the, the clicking noise goes away. Did, now, would it, does that clicking noise, you answered what my first question I was about to ask you was, do you have to actually be moving, but, so that which you do. But the next question is, does that speed differentiate with the speed of the engine and the RPMs, or does the... The frequency change with the speed that you're traveling down the road, the It'd vehicle be the, speed. The RPMs. Be the RPMs. And, and then what makes you think you're having a transmission issue? You said it seemed to be related to the transmission. Is there some other symptom related that, that makes you look towards the transmission? No, everything seems to be fine with it shifting. I've heard a lot of bad things about the Nissan Murano CVT. So, <laughs> and I, I've also heard... Uh, I've, I've read forums where they say, you know, people have said the clicking noise is normal, that it's just these these transmissions make this sort of noise. I'm not a whole 100 percent for sure. How many miles are in this car? About 160 thousand. And then how long have you owned it? I've owned it for about the last three years. Okay, perfect. Dave, you were about to say something. What are you thinking? Well, I'm I'm trying to number one, he answered the key question: what's the mileage? But what's the service history? Because some of the fluids today, they lose the ability to lubricate and that. But I did learn, learn something from Dave Riccio the last time I was listening to the radio show. Can you duplicate the noise from us and give us an idea of what it sounds like? Yeah. Well, Stu's on hold, back on hold again, but I'm not going to make him make funny noises or anything. But there's a couple other things that come to mind. You needed to get it into a shop, and let's determine if that noise is really related to the transmission or if it's if maybe it's something in the belt drive system. We were talking about belts today, and, and and several things are overlooked when people are replacing belts nowadays. That is a belt drive system. There's tensioners and idlers, and that belt is winding around. And that belt tension is so important to keep the air conditioner working right, the alternator charging right. So what we'll do in the shop sometimes, well, first we want to duplicate the noise. Try and go for a test drive with the technician if you can or the service advisor and, and get the noise to happen again. And then we may look at maybe the next best thing to do is we'll just take the belt off and run the vehicle without the belt. Well, if the noise has gone away, well, it's, then it's, it's something in the belt drive system. If, it, if we identify that it's, it's the middle of the car, then we maybe be looking at the transmission area or torque converter or something like that. But I will also say that those forums can be dangerous. We'll go there for information sometime, but nobody's on a forum telling you all the good stuff. And I would agree the CVT transmission in that Murano is, is problematic at times. Uh, but but be careful of the be careful of the uh, of what you read on the forums, and don't use that to steer what you think the problem might be, because you might if you go to the wrong shop. And you send them down that road, they may go with you. Hey, this guy's thinking he needs a chaining. Let's write him up. So, so go in with your symptoms, your noises, your best descriptions, and, and that's going to be your, your best bet. And if you need a shop, if you have a shop, stay with that shop. That We always talk about the relationship. If you're looking for one, we can help you find one at bumper to bumper com. So thanks for the call, Stu. And we are going to go next with James in Phoenix, if I push the right button here. James has got a 1991 Ford Explorer. James, what can we do for you? Thank you for taking my call. Uh, 
I've got a 91 Explorer, and I was driving it the other day, and I turned off on the exit road and pulled up to the stop sign, and I had absolutely no gears at all to move it. It's automatic. Okay. And, and that, so you just got off the highway and then pulled, and then when you went to exit, it was just, just wouldn't move. Correct. Uh, it won't even go in reverse or nothing. I've got nothing. And now is, now have you, did you, did you let it sit for a period of time and now it's moving or is it just dead stick, dead in the water now? It's still not moving. I let it sit overnight and tried it. Wow. Well, where is Dave when you need him, I guess? The transmission, <laughs> the transmission <laughs> expert is not here. And, um, you know, it, I was going to say if the car had started moving again, we might have a situation where the filter is plugging up and, or low on fluid and we're sucking all that fluid and not returning it enough to the pan and we're starving the fluid or, or possibly the filter housing is cracked, allowing it to suck air, which is still a possibility. Did it make any noises on you? Was there any metallic or harsh noises or anything? No, and as far as the filler goes, I changed all of that uh, a couple months ago. It just absolutely makes no noise or don't move or anything. James, let me ask you, why did you change that stuff? Did And did you do it or did a shop do it? And what was the basis for making that change? No, I just did it myself uh, uh, just to clean the transmission pan and the filter and everything. I put a new filter and all of that in, uh, along with the oil change and stuff. And what kind of mileage on that vehicle, James? It's about 100000 Okay. Well, I bet that you're – I'm leaning towards there's nothing wrong with the transmission. And I say that now because you went in there and you did a service. And it sounds like basically, you know, if you were able to do that, I would, I'm going to make the assumption that you're pretty mechanically inclined. So I guess what I would do if you, if you want to do it yourself and, and have the satisfaction of fixing it, or maybe you can look at the mirror and get mad at yourself maybe, I bet that you're going to find if, what I would do if I were you, and I, and I suspect what you'll find is you need to remove the transmission pan, very carefully do that. If it has a drain plug, try and get that fluid out of there first. And I bet you might find that filter just sitting in the bottom of the pan. It, the pump is not sucking any fluid off out of the pan because maybe you didn't get the O-ring that sits on the top of the filter where it, it, it goes up into the pan. Maybe you didn't get the old one off and you double O-ringed it and it fell down. Maybe the O-ring rolled when you pushed it up. Dave, what do you, I mean, that's... Well, that's the first place I'd start. If you had the vehicle towed to me and I heard that story, I would go back to the basics of... Let's look at what we changed first before the car was operating properly in that. And uh, I think that'd be a good good marker for you to start on. The- Especially combined with there was no noises or anything like that. So if you need a good transmission shop, try City Transmission. They're in Tempe, Rio Salado, and the 202 right there by the Tempe, Tempe Marketplace. And, and they're not... Uh, you know, when it comes to needing a transmission, I think, that, you know, Dave says the overwhelming majority of the time, people don't need a transmission when they come in there. It's an electronics issue or something else happened. But an investment like that, you want to be at your regular shop or you want to be at a transmission shop. And that's, you know, from Phoenix to Tempe there, it's worth the drive. You're going to drive a long distance to buy a new refrigerator, a new washer and dryer. You're going to find the place. And, and when it comes to transmission, that's a, a good idea too. So... James, thanks for the call. We're going to go with uh, David on his 1990 K2500 pickup, Chevy pickup. David, what can we help you with today? Hi, how are you guys doing? Um, I'm calling today. Um, my uh, horn space stopped working. Um, the In the steering column, the little plastic where the spring goes in was broken, so I replaced that. And then now I'm not getting no horn. I hear a tick when I push the the horn. I put my meter on the horns or the on the wires. I'm getting 12 volts on both horns, but the horns don't work. And um, if I hook up the horn directly to the battery, they come on. Okay. So th- that truck does not have an airbag, does it? It don't. It doesn't have an airbag. Okay. Well, and then where do you hear that click noise from? I hear it like uh, underneath the dash somewhere. Okay. Well, what I'm thinking is that click noise that you're hearing is the relay. The and relay. It, yeah, it's the relay clicking. And, and it's the circuit being completed through the button in the steering wheel. And that horn, that relay is clicking. Your horn, 
I'm not sure off the top of my head, does that horn always have 12 volts or is it waiting for 12 volts and it's grounded? I'm pretty sure it's always grounded with the body of the horn and then it's got a 12 volt supply going to it, right? Right. Okay. Well, but what you what? can... What can happen? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, what can happen a lot of times, and, and we used to see the problem on on Nissan. Well, it doesn't matter the the car. We used to see it with Nissan starters. They call it a clutch inhibitor switch. But you can put 12 volts across a across a hair, so to speak, an ultra fine piece of wire. But it's not the voltage that makes that horn honk. It's the amperage. You've got to carry enough amperage to the horn. So, Dave, what or Tim? Tim, you're not a technician. You're, you're, I'm, I'm still but, thinking the horn relay. Well, yeah, the horn relay is is one. It's probably the easiest thing to check. And and this thought process that I'm thinking out loud, that's exactly what the technician's doing. We're gonna get a, maybe a wiring diagram. I look at the wiring diagram like a road map. You need to know where you need to go. You need to know where you start and what are all the roads in between. The easiest thing for you, and it sounds like you've got the meter, you've got the background probably to check this, but the simplest shortcut. Go switch the relay. There, you're probably going to find four or five relays down there. Unplug one, look at it, mark it first, and then maybe you take the fuel pump relay. Maybe it's the same relay. Well, I guarantee if the truck doesn't start, you found the bad relay. But if maybe the blower relay or whatever, whatever relay that plugs in the same, and then honk the horn. I bet the contacts in the relay are bad. Yeah, and I bet you can find a uh, component locator relay comp- uh, online. Just Google it. And yeah. uh, it'll probably show you right where to go. And like Matt said, it's a real quick fix. Just pull it out, plug it in, see what you got. Or also have someone push the horn while you're down there, and you can probably just pick up where the relay is just by the noise and the click while you're underneath the dash there. Yeah, and then the other thing, make sure the horn has a good ground, but you said that because you wired it directly. The other thing you could do is take – that's where you have to be careful in the shop. We don't use just a little test light. You can light those test light bulbs with a very dead battery. You need a, a heavy, like an old 6054, big old two-prong headlight. Put one of those on ground and one to the horn. And put the put the headlight in place of the horn and hit the button. If it lights that, I bet you would find that it's not going to light the headlight. And again, you're either going to have a connection problem in the wiring or, or, or a relay problem. So good call, David. I think you'll be able to fix that one yourself. And uh, we've got some open lines. Up next, after we take a quick break, we have Mark in Q on his Honda and Mark in Gilbert on his Lexus. We'll be right back with you. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio on KTAR. Well, I wish I could start this with uh, gentlemen start your engines or something, waving a green flag. But uh, we're back at Bumper to Bumper Radio with a big race weekend. I'm excited. I'm going to wake up. Uh, you know, the Formula One race in Monaco is on at 5 a.m., Sunday morning, so I'll make my move to the couch and doze on and off, and and uh, or maybe just stay up all night. I can't do that anymore, Tim. I, I don't have it in me anymore. I guarantee you, ten o'clock, I'm done. I might stretch to eleven, uh, but but not going to happen. So Indy five hundred, big day. Uh, it, it's it's my exciting day tomorrow. So, but today. I am here to help you with your car. So if you have a question, give us a call. We always take every call. So if you have a call and we don't get to you during the show, don't hang up because I stay after and I answer calls. If you have a question, if you're a little shy and you just want to send us an email looking for some help, you can do that at bumpertobumperradio.com. Hit the contact link or or maybe try and communicate with us on Facebook. So we're here to help you, 602 277-5827. Two seven seven five eight two seven, and we are first going to go with. We're going to try Mark in Gilbert, who's got a two thousand Lexus. Mark, what can we help you with today? Yeah, hi, uh, long time listener, first time caller. I'm calling about my car. Um, it's I don't know if it's intermittent issue, but I keep getting the check engine light and uh, uh, on all the time. But I took it to a couple shops and to uh, pull the codes, but nothing comes up. And then oh, one of the shops told me to just uh, reset it by unplugging the battery, and then it'll, you know, I did that, and it'll go away for a while, and then all of a sudden you're driving, you know, at a regular normal speed, and it'll just come on, but you don't feel any differences as far as engines or transmission. When that light comes on, is is the light on when you're getting a when they're checking for the code and there isn't a code, or is the light off? Uh, the light, uh, both of them, when the lights are on. Okay. Well, so. I, well, I have no clue what the problem is. There's 
probably literally hundreds of things that can cause that check engine light to come on. The worst thing that can happen is it will be flashing. That means you have a problem right now you need to solve. The light's just on. You need to solve the problem. However, I suspect what's happening is you're going to somebody that does not have the proper tools. They sell a $100 gizmo that a lot of us have. We'll just go out and do a quick parking lot code check, and there's nothing wrong with that. But you've these that is a sophisticated system on that car, even though it's 13 years old. And if you just have a run-of-the-mill scan tool, you're not going to be able to see and read all the codes potentially. I know, Dave, you have it at your shop. I have it. We have the factory Toyota diagnostic equipment. We hook right into the Toyota website through a laptop and an interface called a Mongoose, and that's going to give you the best data. Oh, absolutely. It's going to you know give you current pending codes in that. It's also going to show you any technical service bulletins, any pending software updates of that nature there. So uh, I think Matt's on the right mark with you trying to steer you to a shop and, and ask him up front, what type of technology are you going to use to diagnose my vehicle? Yeah, you've got to have a scan tool that they call bi-directional controls. I don't think this car has CAN or what they call controlled area network or any fiber optics in it. So you need a shop. And the good shop in Gilbert, Desert Car Care, depending on where you are in, in Mesa or in, in that area, I get a little lost in the East Valley. Mesa Auto Works is a great shop out there. But try them out at BumperToBumperRadio.com. And don't settle for, uh, the light doesn't come on, don't worry about it. That light comes on because there's a problem. That doesn't mean maybe you're going to break down today, but you need to get the get the problem solved. So thanks for the call. And we're going to go with um, another Mike, Mike in Phoenix on a 2004 Honda Accord. Mike from Phoenix, what can we help you with? Mike, are you there? Well, it doesn't look like Mike. I'm here. I'm oh, here. okay, Mike, what can we help you with on your Accord? So, uh, thanks for taking my call. I got So since I've had the car uh, in 2004, I've had to change the battery about five times, but three of those in the last 18 months and my most recent battery i put in was in october and then just last week the battery died again um any thoughts i mean the dealership said nothing was wrong with it when i when they told me there was only 30 percent or whatever it was a couple weeks ago hey mike what brand of battery are you changing out uh i'm not sure i just took it from o'reilly Okay. Oh, well, I mean, that's an Exide battery. They're probably a decent battery. I can't imagine that you're getting a bunch of bad batteries. Um, I like Delco batteries. Uh, there's Interstate are good brands. Exide is what I think they have at O'Reilly, which is probably just fine. But I suspect you have a weak alternator. We've been talking about belts, the belt drive system. If you've got a loose belt, possibly not, not spinning that alternator at the right speed. Harmonic balancer slipping. Tim, you're chomping at the bit. Has anybody done an actual charging system test on your car? Yeah, that's the other thing we need to do. You need to get in and not and, and not the charging system test that the guy at AutoZone does or the guy at O'Reilly. We have some of the same tools that we have that they have, but it needs a technician, I think, is the problem. I don't think you have a battery issue. You've got some kind of, of, of charge issue. So if you need some extra help with that or not sure what to do, shoot us an email at bumper to bumper and uh, I'm going to put myself on the spot here. It's been a while since I was a technician. I, my last technician job was at Camelback Porsche, which is no longer there. But I'm going to give it a shot, Marcus. Call from Scottsdale on his 03 911. What can we do for you? Hi. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, uh, I have a question for you. I have a, 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 a 03 911 Turbo. Um, it's been tuned a little bit, but... Um, uh, it keeps going out of gear when I under load when uh, out of third gear in particular it keeps going it popping out of gear and I was wondering if you thought that was a, a clutch problem or a synchro problem and this is obviously a manual transmission so I would be looking and I'm not the internal gearbox expert or anything like that but I would be looking um, first to make sure that the engine and transmission are properly mounted down. That's got, I'm not sure in that car if it has a cable or if it still has the linkage to manually shift the car, but if that transmission mount is moving around, uh, if the engine is moving around and you're loading that thing, torquing it under third gear, it's still got a tremendous amount of power and torque, and, and you may be influencing that shift cable by moving the transmission of the engine assembly slightly. You're going to lengthen or pull on that cable, which very well could be popping it out of gear. 
Um, if that's not it and those linkages and everything are tight, you probably have got something in the gearbox where it would be a synchronizer or a, a, a dog. I think you know there's some of the terminology in there that's not locking the gear into place. So that's where I would be looking, and that's something that's definitely you want to have a specialist for that. I wouldn't tackle that transmission any longer. Dave at Tri-City might, but if you need a Porsche specialist referral, please give me an email at bumper to bumper So Mike from Scottsdale, we are not going to get to you, but I'm going to help you with your car off the air in just a minute. So Dave and Tim, Dave's car care in Peoria, 51st Avenue, Tim, Virginia auto service. Thank you for coming in to help. 